On the 16th of January, Turkey's constitutional court banned the Islamic Rifah Party. The leader of the largest party in the Turkish parliament, Erbakan, also the former prime minister, was stripped of his seat and barred from politics for five years. With the banning of the Rifah Party, has the future of the Islamic revivalist movement in Turkey come to a dead end? When you look at the trend in the past, they did this twice, and each time we came back even stronger. So they will help us to come back to power alone. Despite its 99% Muslim population, modern Turkey was given a secular constitution by the father of the nation, Kamal Ataturk. Ataturk prescribed to the Western model. Right from dress to the Turkish script, everything was westernized. The Swiss civil code was introduced. And today what Turkey values most is the elusive membership to the European Union, which may become even more difficult to get if the Islamic movement should wipe out its secular image. The divide between the Kemalists and the Islamists is deeply ingrained. I'm standing on the Bosphorus in Istanbul, the strip of water that divides Asia from Europe. In other words, Istanbul is in Europe as well as in Asia. And this schizophrenia sears through the Turkish sensibility. Ataturk mandated that Turkey is part of Europe. To the extent that it is not, is exactly the kind of sentiment that parties like the Refah take advantage of, operating on the Islamic personality of Turkey. The Refah party first tasted power in 1995 when Erbakan became the Prime Minister. It offered an honest government that worked. Turkey, faced with 80% inflation and a corrupt government, was looking for an alternative. I think the bottom line is that really the social and the economic uh, uh, disenchantment of uh, a certain amount of people have led also to the strengthening of this movement. What added to the appeal of the Rafah party was its agenda for more freedom of expression. And Abdullah Gul, leader of the band party, is aware of India's secular tradition. India is, for me, one of the best secular country, okay? Muslims, non-Muslims, they live together. And the largest Muslim, although the Muslims are they have the minority there, but uh, in the world, they are second, I think. Okay, the second uh, Muslim population, the largest population is in India. So it's very important for us, of course. Compared to the freedom of religious and cultural expression in India, modern Turkey's definition of secularism, according to Gul, is highly flawed. So we have to look at implementation understanding of secularism. For instance, if a girl cannot go to university with her scarf, is the secularism or not secularism? Okay, in India, in, in Europe, in America, it's nothing with secularism. But in Turkey, unfortunately, we have a problem. Okay, some people, they say it's against secularism. We say it doesn't have anything with secularism. The headdress, or hijab for women, is banned in all government institutions, schools and colleges. But one increasingly finds women on streets sporting the headgear, clearly pointing to the increasing popularity of the party and its views. Islamists say the very basis of secularism, separation of politics from religion, is not followed in Turkey. In fact, here, the government, through its presidency of religious affairs, directly administers all of its 80,000 mosques. Secularism as it is understood in the West is understood as separation of religion from the state. That is not true in Turkey. For example, the Directorate of Religious Affairs controls a lot of things that governs religion. That cannot be secularism because religious affairs are supposed to be personal. The party is upset about the indirect curbs on its Imam Hatib schools which provide religious education and are a major recruiting ground for the Islamists. After the government increased compulsory primary education from five years to eight years, 
The Imam Hatib schools were forced to shut down their junior high sections. We believe that it was unfair uh, to force children to choose their, to determine their future, uh, to choose their uh, areas of uh, studying and interest under pressure uh, from uh, the surroundings that uh, they should not be forced to choose their future before they reach the age of 14 or 15. What can you do in eight years primary education? You can just brainwash the people, children. So it's an ideological approach, okay? So uh, we really uh, see this, it's wrong, okay? There is no system. The Rifah party's ideological battle has found it many supporters, particularly in the less westernized countryside. But Erbakan's strong anti-democratic statements could well prove to be a setback for the Islamic movement in a Turkey that has experienced 50 years of Kemalist secularism. Mr. Erbakan used such a sentence, we will come to the power even if we need the blood, we'll use uh, the blood. So, I mean, Turkey is a democratic country, but it's not an anarchist country. You have uh, the um, intellectual class, you have uh, the business community, you have uh, a large section of, of the media, uh, the young generation. Uh, so uh, secularism is, uh, is uh, I think, still uh, a vision. So is the future of Turkey Kemalist or Islamist? This will depend to a large extent on the success of the political face of the Islamist movement, which at the moment is struggling to regroup itself after the ban of the Rifah party and its leader.